Hi guys, welcome to your first violin lesson. My name is Amber and um, today we are going to learn a little bit about the violin and a little intro to the viola too. Hi to the viola. Um, I'm going to show you some very basic setup things. This is very important information. <laughs> so important, please don't skip this lesson. Um, in fact, if you have problems later on with your bow or your left hand, it all boils down to this basic thing. So please pay attention. Um, we're going to go over a few things about reading notes as well. And I'm going to give you um, a book to, the, a recommended book that you can get for free on the website imslp.org to help you learn your notes and also start your technique. The next lessons will be um, some fun songs for you to learn, but this is going to hopefully be not too long. Um, so let's just get right into it. <laughs> um, let's see. This is a violin. I'd recommend that if you are, if you're kind of looking for a violin at the moment, you don't have one, you should, violins also, by the way, come in various sizes. You can get a violin that's a one quarter, um, like a one half, a three quarters, and then a four four when you're kind of looking for instruments. And then if you're very small, <laughs> you can get a very, very small instrument. I don't even know the smallest violin, but it's probably like a one, 18th or something size. It's a very small size for a little baby to play. Um, it's also known as a Christmas tree ornament in my studio, <laughs> that size. But um, this is a 4-4 four, four size instrument. That's, a, this, that's the full size violin. You also don't want to get the cheapest one to start with. You don't also want to get the most expensive one. You just need one that is going to serve you as a tool to learn on, that has a nice sound that's um, easy, easy as the violin can be to play. Um, and the same thing with the bow. You need to have a good bow, something that's not the cheapest thing. When you're setting this instrument, it's um, <laughs> it, it's gonna require a lot of time, energy, and money to learn this. So you don't wanna just be kind of expecting to learn it on the cheapest dime possible. <laughs> but especially when it comes down to your tools that you're working with. So um, this, is a, this is an heirloom that I inherited, but you can get a nice violin for anywhere between like a nice starter instrument would start around three to five hundred dollars with a bow and a case. That would be kind of like a, a basic level starting instrument. If you were to go for a really nice starting instrument, you're gonna pay around fifteen hundred dollars or two thousand dollars for the violin, bow, and case. So um, you're also gonna need to get a couple other things along with that too, a shoulder rest and a chin. Well, you're gonna probably find that you need to change your chin rests and we'll get into that. Um, a shoulder rest is also very, very helpful. Um, I forgot mine, so I'm gonna just grab it. <laughs> Sit tight for a second. Okay, and I brought my charger. All right, so these are both shoulder rests. This is my viola shoulder rest. This is my violin shoulder rest. They're both by the brand Kuhn. Um, violin sh viola shoulder rests come into various sizes, but the violin, um, and then also does the violin, but um, if, you're a full, if you have a full size viola, there's different sizes for those instruments. So. Maybe we can talk about that another time. So we'll just focus in on the violin. So this shoulder rest is specifically made for a size 4-4 instrument. So just kind of make sure that you match it for whichever size violin that you have. You want to put on your shoulder rest in a specific way. Um, the chin rest that I recommend to all my student, my students, my studio, my students, is this Whitner hypoallergenic chin rest. Um, it's a plastic chin rest and it's light, so it's not super heavy. And I like it because it sits over the tailpiece and often our chin does sit over the tailpiece. There's other chin rests that kind of put you off to the side here like this. Um, but I, I just always find that this is the, a good place to start. Um, and getting comfortable is going to be a little journey as well. So 
um, you're going to put your chin rest on. You can use that, you can use a little tool that comes with, with the chin rest, this Whitner chin rest. Um, but if you, have, if you have to kind of take off an, an old chin rest or any other chin rest that doesn't have a little screwdriver, you can always use a trusty paper clip. Like, you know those black paper clips that you kind of clip together? You just take this off and then it can, um, they have these like little holes here on the chin rest and you can just un, um, unscrew the, the leg using this little special device. <laughs> so I'm gonna put, pop that away. Let's see, so putting the shoulder rest on is going to be very important. You can also adjust the height of the legs too, but um, that's going to be up to you. I like to put mine on like this. So it's pretty close to the chin rest itself, about a, a finger's distance, and it, then it goes straight across. Also, this side where the chin rest is on, this is the lower side of the shoulder rest. Left side for the chin rest, lower side for the shoulder rest, L and L, left side for the chin rest, lower side of the shoulder rest are on the same side. And then you're gonna just put this up on your shoulder. So then the question comes, oh, where <laughs> does it go? Does it go here? Does it go here? Where does it go? It goes on your left shoulder and you're going to put your arms in front of you. You don't wanna to have to kind of move your arms off to the side. So try to find a position where you can just drop your head forward and then there, there's your, your instrument. You want the scroll to be kind of at eye level. And I don't know if you can kind of see that the nose and the scroll are kind of lining up together. So that way you can see what you're doing with minimal kind of contorting of your own body. So it only took me 25 years to get comfortable, <laughs> but hopefully you can find a, a more comfortable position on your own. I also like to use a little um, cloth to put over the chin rest because I just find that it's more comfortable and I teach all day. And when it's hot in the summer, it just helps my, um, oop, I put them backwards. It just kind of, you know, when you're sweat, when you sweat, in the summer and it's really hot it just kind of soaks that up a little bit so oh there you go it's nice and comfortable um anyway we can kind of go further into setup at another video but that's just kind of a basic idea this is a coon original shoulder rest not the collapsible one just the coon original shoulder rest and a whitner hypoallergenic side mount chin rest and i use both setups for the violin and viola Okay, so um, let's just kind of go over a couple things for you to know about the instrument. You have the tailpiece, the bridge, the fingerboard. This is the black part, the fingerboard. Um, these are the F holes. They're very, very, very delicate. So you don't want to be touching the instrument around here. You always want to grab the instrument here when you're holding it. So you want to avoid grabbing the, the wood, especially in this area. If you look inside, there is a little sound post, and that is very important for the sound to vibrate out um, of the instrument. So the placement of that is very important. If it happens to fall down at some point, um, you need to go see someone to, to go put it in the right place. You can also have um, each year when you go take your instrument in to just kind of get cleaned up and maybe change your strings. Um, they will probably move the sound post and it will definitely uh, improve the sound. So if your violin sounds like this ever, you might consider changing um, the sound post a little bit. Just go take it to a luthier. So then you have uh, the scroll, the pegs. These are very important when it comes to tuning. You also are going to have some fine tuners down here. I only have one because I don't need, um, over all the years that I've been studying and playing, I don't need um, these ones. But as a beginner, you should definitely have them. They're really, really helpful. And um, let's see, is there anything else? I don't think you really need to know anything about the, the, um, the ribs and the front and the back. So I think that's about it. Let's talk about the bow for a second. Um, 
there are many different, there's kind of a range of weights for the bow, so you can kind of end up with a heavier bow or a lighter bow. I have no idea the, the grams that this bow is. It's, I do know that it's a little bit lighter, but when you're a beginner, sometimes it's nice to have a heavier bow because it helps you draw the sound out. Just everything in moderation though. So um, this is what the bow looks like. Let's just talk about kind of how to look after your bow. You can see that mine's really not um, very tight right now. This is how you're going to always store it when you're done playing. So when you are ready to play, you're gonna just take this little lever here, and or this little whatever this is here, and you're just gonna tighten the bow. And you never, never, never wanna to touch this hair. This is horse hair. Um, you never wanna to touch it because we all have finger oils. Even if you don't think you have finger oils, you do. Don't touch the hair um, because you're gonna get an oily spot there and it won't speak on the bow. It's gonna drive you crazy. So try to avoid touching the hair. You're gonna also have this thing called rosin. There's many different kinds of rosin. I really like Andrea rosin. It lasts forever. There's many different kinds. It's, it's a professional rosin. It's, there's different kinds. There's solo rosin, there's orchestral rosin. I just kind of use the solo one. So with the Andrea rosin, you don't need a lot of it. You just, um, you're gonna just do a couple sweeps, long sweeps along the bow like that. That should probably do it. Um, and did you notice how I held it like this and then swept, swept the bow across like that? So it just kind of helps with the application. Okay, when you get a, a new bow, it's probably not gonna have any rosin on it, so it won't make any sound. So you definitely will need to put some rosin on your um, horse hair if you're, if you're kind of new to everything. So how to hold the bow perhaps would be interesting to know. <laughs> So I'm gonna just take it in my left hand and just hold it here on the stick. I'm gonna take my right hand, I'm gonna put my thumb in this little nook here. Thumb goes there. The other fingers, I'm going to just let them flop over like this, right? And then you can see they're not touching. I'm gonna wrap them around so that they are touching. So the middle finger and the thumb line up, the, the ring finger there kind of goes over that eye there. This is very important, the ring finger. Take a look at my wrist, by the way, let's fix it. I'm not gonna be playing like this. I'm gonna be playing like this because we have a wrist so that it can bend. So you wanna kind of be finding your bow hold like this. You notice my elbow is lower than my wrist. So don't be like trying to grab the bow like this and find your, your fingering. Let your arm just be relaxed flop it over the, the stick like this. They, these have a little function, this completes the circle. This is the front and the back kind of pushing finger if you need that um, to change your contact point. This is a balancing finger and this finger here helps distribute the weight. So, but each finger has weight in it. So if you're holding it like this and you let go, you might notice that there, the thumb takes some of that weight and the pinky definitely does too. Just make sure that all these little joints here are nice and curved because you have joints so that they can curve. You don't want to be doing this or whatever. No, don't be doing this. It's going um, to be hard for you to maintain that and it also doesn't help with your sound. So that's kind of a basic thing about how to uh, hold the bow. And then remember our setup? We were going to put the instrument up in front of us, like we're holding a, a, a platter, right? You don't want your arms over here or over here. You're on it, you're putting it on your left shoulder there. The scroll and the eyes are kind of eye level or parallel, right? The nose and the scroll kind of line up. You see where my arms are? Let's take a look at my arms. Maybe right now, if you're not sure where to put your hand, you can kind of keep it here for now. Um, but if you want to try something else, your thumb and first finger, hand like this, and you're going to go down as far as you can, and then just let all this relax, okay? So you can just keep your fingers in the air. There we go. You just want to keep everything nice and relaxed. That's actually a very important thing to remember. Okay, so now with the bow, got our bow hand, thumb, middle finger, ring finger, pinky, first finger, wrist is nice and curved, and I'm going to think about my shoulder and the stick just lining up together. I'm gonna to be lowering to a string and then just letting the arm relax. 
Right now I am on my A string. It's the second string over. There's a really thin string called the E string, and then there's the A string right there. Okay, so let's just try this a few times. Up in the air, see the form there? Form is very important. And lowering, and we're gonna lower to what's called the frog. This area is called the frog, this is called the tip, and here's the middle. So let's look at my contact point. I'm kind of keeping it pretty close to the bridge, lining up the shoulder point and the, the, the hair, if you can kind of think of that. You see how I'm not straining to put it there? I'm just keeping my arm nice and relaxed. If I was to go to my last string over here, See how I have to raise my arm and I'm still lowering it. The shoulder point and the stick and the hair are lining up together. And this way the violin is supported by the bow. And the next thing I can do is just open. Okay, it might not sound like that right away. <laughs> As I said, it only took me 25 years. Okay, so I think that the only thing I, I haven't told you is the name of the strings. I'm going to just tell you that really quickly. Um, from over here, you have your E, A, D, and G. Okay, E, A, D, G. And the next thing that we just kind of need to go over uh, that I promised was what these notes look like on the A string. Okay. Your open A string looks like this. So it's a space note as opposed to a line note. See, it's on the line there, space note. It's on that second space from the bottom. Um, the space notes spell the word face, F-A-C-E. By the way, the open E string looks like that. You can also play this with your fourth finger, that one on the, um, on the A string. So your A would be open. Your first finger would be B, second finger, it's gonna be C sharp. We typically learn C sharp before we learn C on the A string just because of the pattern. There's a few different patterns, um, hand patterns. So C sharp, and then D, and then if you use your fourth finger, there's E. It's the same as your open E. Okay, so let's just take a really quick look at what that looks like. You can go more in depth into another video, um, but you see how I find it? Take my hand all the way back, nice and straight, not hyperextended, not like this, just nice and straight. These are neutral. I'm gonna take my first finger and I'm gonna drop it and see where it falls. We're not really gonna play the notes yet. I just want you to kind of put them on the string. All right, so this would be open A, first finger is B, second finger is C sharp, third finger is D, fourth finger is E. Here's one little tip as well. When you play open one, two in this pattern on any string, it always sounds like the song Do, Re, Mi. So if A is Do, Re, Mi. So if I play it, you can tell it's not right. So you can kind of use your ears, even if you think you have no idea um, what things should sound like. You do know the song Do Re Mi. Also, Three Blind Mice or Mary Had a Little Lamb is the reverse of that. Three Blind Mice on any string. Okay? Then your third finger and second finger are squished together. This makes the song Jaws. And then you have your last finger here. A lot of people have a hard time with fourth finger. Just put fourth finger up in the air straight, and then you're gonna whack it down in one piece from that joint. And eventually you're gonna get a really strong fourth finger muscle there. Right now you might not have the finger strength to actually do that. Um, all the fingers, by the way, are just on this one string. They're kind of on the tip of the finger. Not hyperextended to be on the tip, just kind of, um, not like this, <laughs> not like that. You can see the difference. They're kind of forming a square. Okay, so I think that's pretty much it. Um, when you're done playing, you're going to loosen your bow. It's very important that you loosen your bow. When you tighten your bow, you wanna kind of maintain um, a curve in the bow. 
So if I tightened it like this, it's kind of going the opposite way. It's kind of doing this as opposed to this. You can kind of over time start to see if your bow is getting stressed out. A bow is like a person. You don't want to put it under too much pressure. So kind of like this, when you put it on the string, it's going to have some give. It's not going to be totally flat like this against the, the stick. You don't want that either. So as I said, you're going to loosen your bow. You are going to take off your shoulder rest because you can't put your violin back in the case with the shoulder rest. And then you're going to get a little handkerchief. Check, check out like Target or, um, you know, like a thrift store or something, a Goodwill, just like a cotton thing. And it's very important that you just wipe the strings off and the wood underneath because you don't want this rosin to build up on your beautiful violin. You can also say thank you, little violin. Um, that was fun. And, and then you're just gonna put it back in your case. Um, some other things that would probably be useful for you to have would be, let me see, I thought I had it here somewhere, ah, is a tuner. You can also just get an app, um, but I would really recommend getting a tuner. This is the one that I recommend to all my students. It's a Korg TM50. It has a tuner on one side and a metronome on the other side. Um, we can go into understanding tuners a little bit more in depth, but they're very helpful and you will probably need one of these when you are tuning. Tuning might be another lesson. So we just kind of, to recap, talked about the parts of the instrument. We talked about kind of basic form. We talked about chin rest, shoulder rests, and where the placement was. And then um, how to hold the bow where your fingers go kind of in this basic pattern. This is the basic hand pattern that we went over today. And just kind of what the notes look like on the A string. So if you can memorize what A looks like, that'll be really helpful for you. If you were to um, check out a um, book to help you with your violin studies, I would highly recommend you get this. Um, this is book one through three the School of Violin Techniques, and this is actually available for free on a website called imslp.org. You don't need a membership. It kind of looks like you do need one, but you don't. It just takes 15 seconds for it to download. And here is the very first exercise on one string. It happens to be on the A string, and it's just gonna help you map out that basic pattern that we went over. A, B, C sharp, D, E, D, C sharp, B, A, and it just kind of repeats that. So you can kind of get some muscle memory. You can work on speeding things up a little bit, kind of work on your finger dexterity. And it's just gonna help you go through all these patterns just on one string, just to kind of help you with reading the notes. And when you're working in this etude, you wanna be very careful about your muscle memory about your ear training, making sure that it sounds like do, re, mi. You can have your tuner there to help you. Uh, make sure that your jaws, that half step, that two and three together is really in tune. And make sure that fourth finger comes down nice and easily with a nice whack <laughs> to kind of build your finger strength. Okay, so um, they, this book kind of progresses and challenges your um, hand patterns. The next exercise is also on one string, but it's not no longer in that basic hand pattern anymore, so you're gonna run into little accidentals, as we call them. Then you're gonna to get to exercises on two strings, so on your D string and your A string in the basic hand pattern. This is exercise three. Exercises between two strings with string crossings. It's hard enough on one string, but string crossings are also challenging. And then, and just it kind of progresses until you get up to four strings, and then it's gonna take you through various positions as well. But um, you probably will need the aid of a violin teacher on your musical journey. Definitely take advantage of all the free information that's out there. But um, violin is, a, is kind of a tricky instrument to learn. And I, I have yet to meet anyone who does not have a violin teacher who's studying this instrument. So um, go find someone that you click with. I teach in Philadelphia. Um, I, my, my website is violinviolamasterclass.com. All ages, all levels welcome. I teach the violin and viola. 
And um, yeah, so if you are interested, check that out. And I also teach online too. So I'll see you for the next lesson. Bye. Leave your comments below. I will try to answer them in the next video.